I'm Tom Bagley, Deputy Director of Communication. So the Commission, I want to thank you for having us on your agenda this evening. We're very busy. We really appreciate it. Well, happy to have you here. This project is very important to you and everybody else. So, Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thank Once we do start, we know there are going to be impacts um, for everyone involved. Um, and then you'll know who to call instead of the mayor's office, because all the mayor's office does is call Tom, and then Tom calls me, and I call Ernst, and Ernst calls the contractor. Instead, it's much easier if we just uh, communicate effectively through uh, the contacts. So earlier this evening, we handed out our presentation, and um, one of the most important things in here, and I know it's pretty small print, um, is at least a, a, a brief overview of the work. Uh, we will be sending out a notice letter for the direct of Butters, um, which will have Ernst's um, name in it and the contract information. So, without further ado. Did everybody see that? Oh, I was going to say, if you can be
In addition to Salem Street, we're doing a couple of small sections on two other streets. So for those of you that don't live on Salem Street, you don't want you to feel left out. Uh, we're doing a, another liner on Hanover Street, and that goes from Cross Street to uh, North uh, Hanover Court. And then for anyone that might be on Stillman Place, we're just doing about half of the street with a little water main uh, relay. But the, those two process, projects aren't as significant as uh, Salem Street. So our proposed schedule, and we're flexible with this uh, pending input because we know in the north end that uh, traffic, parking, access are all critical issues. And so we're trying to find out the best time. We were smart enough not to come in June and say we were gonna work through the summer, because that wouldn't have worked. Uh, so we're proposing that we would start October 3rd and uh, for the first section of work, and we would probably be done with that relay by November 18th. Whatever time that we do pick to do the relay, um, it'll take about six weeks for that section here. As you can tell, it doesn't seem very long, but um, there are a few utilities on top of us, next to us, over us, and all the services that tie in, it's gonna be pretty slow. So that's one proposal. And then for the liners, that's a much faster process um, because we don't have to dig the whole street, but we do need to occupy the street, and there are several phases on that. We figured that'll take approximately six weeks to do, but that's, as you can see, almost twice the amount of work um, in the street. And we were initially proposing that to be done from January 3rd to February 14th. So, and that may be a little bit uh, faster. We may be done by the beginning of February. It just depends on what we see once we get into the system. So those are two proposals. In a lot of areas that we do work that is just as congested as this area, most of the time the city's transportation department, they actually mandate what our hours are. But when we get a recommendation from a community group, they usually go with the community group's recommendation. Uh, we're proposing to Unite that if you let us in at 7 in the morning and we'll be out by 4, we believe that might be the best time. Uh, if it's not, we're open for discussion on that. Obviously, we can't do an uh, excavation uh, because uh, it's too noisy for the residential people. Uh, we do like having people allowed to sleep. We are proposing Monday through Friday. You know, if an eight o'clock start is better and we go to five or eight to five, um, it, it, that's one of the things that we really want to kind of get a sense from the group. So why are we doing this? Well, the city does a capital improvement program every year. We spend about $50 million a year improving our system. We look for uh, fail pipe. We also work in conjunction with the Public Works Department on their roadway improvement projects. So we go out and we televise about 40 to 50,000 feet of our system every year. And in that process, we find infiltration, we find cracks, we find defects. Uh, we hope to get to those defects before the road fails. Because once the road fails, then we're in emergency mode and we're just disrupting everybody's life for a longer duration because it actually gets worse. Um, so the good thing about when we do get in here and we have all this section here that can be lined, um, it reduces the impact of the traffic. We have less congestion, we have less time on the street, um, and the excavation is greatly reduced. The only thing that may need to happen and sometimes like that is if we need that manhole cover needs to be removed to get the liner in the system. So for those of you who have never seen what the inside of a sewer looks like, we brought pictures. Um, and that's every, in our old system, we have clay pipe, and those clay pipes are only two feet long. Some of them are brick, and those have maybe one course of brick, two course of brick, depends on the system. Um, and that's actually groundwater coming in between an open joint in our sewer system. So that depletes the, the groundwater system. It also impacts the amount of water that goes down our sewer system, which then impacts how much we get charged by the MWA to treat that sewerage. 
So we're trying to eliminate that infiltration. So how do we get that infiltration removed from our system? Well, we put this liner in there. And in this liner, you'll see it's two, really two coatings here. There's a plastic on the outside and a felt on the inside. Once that comes from the fabric store, um, that's brought in on a big truck, and then we inject that fabric, and that's why this coating is on the outside, with a resin. And this resin is squeezed down the liner and is put into the system. So once it's in the system, um, well, we have to go back a step, I guess the one slide's out. So I, it's just out of sequence. There we go. Uh, we have to go in and confirm what laterals are active. So there may be a need to go into your building to do some dye testing. Uh, we want to confirm which ones are alive and which ones are dead. Uh, for those of you that like trees, our, the tree roots really like our sewer system because they get fertilized and watered all at the same time. However, that's not good for the sewer system because then, it, as you can see, it creates a net and it starts blocking the flow. So our liners actually eliminate the uh, root intrusion as well. So we come out and we set up a bypass system. We need to, say we're doing the liner in this reach, obviously we can't have the flow that's in there going down through the liner when it's being installed. So the contractor will need to set up a bypass system and he directs the flow from upstream, downstream of where he's working. So this is a typical uh, bypass system. It looks worse than it is because this truck here isn't actually really with us. But there is usually a pump set up. And then what they do, once they have the bypass system set up, this is actually a factor. And this starts cleaning the sewer. So once the sewer is clean and we've televised it, we come out. And this is what you'll see on the street or some setup similar to this. This may not be the contractor who's actually doing your work. But there's an inversion. So this liner that we saw in the previous picture, once it has all that resin in it, gets dropped into the manhole, gets pushed down the line, and it stops at the other end. So it's kind of like when you do the laundry and your socks are inside out, and you have to pull the liner back, the sock back out so that it's inverted correctly. That's what we do inside the sewer system here. So the liners come down, and it's getting pushed with water to correct it to the right side. So this gets pushed down the street to the next manhole with water. Sometimes they use steam, so depending on which process they choose to use on this, um, you'll see the, one of those two processes. So once we put that sock all the way down the line, your lateral ties into the side there. We need to reopen those connections. So they have these special cameras that go inside the sewer, and they know where we, your service is before we got there, because we TV it before we go in and put the liner, and then they see this opening, and they'll come back and they reopen your service. So this little robot guy here goes in there, and it has a cutter head on the end, and it actually cuts the service up. I'll, I'll take questions. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are all the sequences that go we do give a lot of notices for liners because when you're in the block that we're doing, um, <coughs> we put the actual liner in, which can take anywhere from 8 to 12 hours to do. We ask you to reduce your sewer discharge. So if you know, you're know you planning a big party, we need to know that ahead of time because you don't want to have 40 guests in your home and then not be able to flush your toilet. Um, we ask you to minimize your water use. We ask you not to run your dishwasher if you don't need to. You know, we ask you not to run your three loads of laundry that night, you know, because what happens is you've got to be able to store in your own service your own sewage. So most people we never have a problem with it. Uh, you know, people can flush the toilets and uh, things like that. But we do ask you to reduce your water usage so that we don't have a problem during the middle of the process. Because once the liner is installed, until it's cured, we can't get to your service. So, but that's why we do all these notices. We do public meetings. We do a two-week, usually advance notice, in writing letting you know we're coming. 
and then the contractor does a 72-hour notice to say this is the date we're going to put the liner in and then we're going to confirm it because where this system out here is a combined sewer that means the drains in the street from the roof leaders and everything else goes into the same pipe so we won't be doing it in the rain so we would then give you a 24-hour notice to say yes we are really proceeding with putting the liner in please minimize your use so again that's why we need public participation and making sure that we know what special events are going on so we don't have a project going in um, that's going to impact a lot of people. Um, so depending on the size of the liner that's going in on each location, it could be in each, as short as three days because we need to go in and clean the pipe, TV the pipe, put the liner in, do the post TV, uh, and we're done. That could be three days. The bigger pipes are the longer sections with more services. It could be as much as eight days. So, unfortunately, the section in the middle here is not uh, a, a candidate to uh, have it aligned, so we have to remove that section. That'll be pretty tedious. We uh, walked the street before the meeting, and it appears the gas company came in uh, ahead of us and did some gas work out there, and it's pretty close to the top of our sewer system. Uh, so they're going to be doing some excavation with a small backhoe. However, a lot of it will probably be hand excavation or they'll bring a factor in that will actually suck the dirt out from around all the services because we have electric services, water service, gas service, sewer laterals, drain laterals. Uh, so it'll be kind of like hand digging down Salem Street. Um, the unfortunate thing for the section in the middle here where we're relaying it, there's no way for us to maintain traffic through there because our sewer is right down the middle. So one of the things that we'd like to discuss tonight is what is a good potential uh, detour uh, for people that don't need to get into this block but need to get around this block to get to the other end. We have one proposal, but I don't live in the north end. Uh, I had looked 25 years ago, but I couldn't afford it. so. Uh, I ended up in Hyde Park. So we, we know that you know all the little shortcuts around town. So maybe you can uh, help us figure out the best route to get around. There are so, no shortcuts. <laughs> I know. We, we have one idea we don't know. And then we'd actually have to get transportation through <coughs> alternate locations as well. So the dirt that is removed that can't be reused in the excavation will be trucked off site, so you don't have to worry. It will be stockpiling the material uh, on the job site because there's actually really no place to put it. Uh, so what are the impacts? Uh, one of the other primary reasons we're down in the north end, and we have another project coming out right behind this one, is uh, because there are some concerns with rodent activity in the north end. And uh, we will be doing a pre-construction survey uh, ahead of time and those uh, inspections will be ongoing if we see an area that needs to be baited heavily we'll continue to bait them heavily the good news is that we do bait our own sewer system and our catch basins those are two primary areas where people believe that the little critters are um, so if they are there they will have dinner in the north end via the commission's uh, contractor and then they will end up at Deer Island for burial so uh, we hope to help control that issue during construction. Um, obviously, when you're digging in the street, there will be some dust, uh, but we do minimize that impact by using calcium. Uh, parking in the area of our work zone will not be allowed. Uh, we have to be able to get down in the street safely. The workers need to be able to access uh, that. A typical work zone that the city allows is 75 feet which takes about four or five parking spaces. Um, and then we'll t we talked a little bit about the uh, traffic impact on the detour, which we'll look at the other side of this plan. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to open up the floor for generic questions. And then if you have anything specific about your own business or uh, we'd like to take those individually, we can stay and talk to you independently because we know there are other issues on the agenda that I'm sure you'd like to get to. Um, I mean, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask the council to ask questions first, and then I'll open up to the general. Sure. Any other council questions about me? 
Um, with regard to the, uh, the notice, you talked about two weeks, 72 hours, 24 hours. What kind of uh, noticing will you be giving to vehicles that are parked on the street in the area that you're planning on going on? Well, there, there's two different types of notices. The first notice is the commission's letter that we will mail to the building owners and then we'll hand distribute to the street. The second type of notice is the one that the contractor does, which is a requirement of the Boston Transportation Department um, notice. And I believe that's 72 in hours in advance. They put placards on people's windshields, and then there'll be no parking designated signs um, actually posted on the street. Um, so those are the two mechanisms. We also have uh, email. Uh, we do several other distributions. So if the North End has a network, of email distribution, um, we can do updates, and then you could distribute that to your your uh, participants in the process. Um, that works very successfully. We could even give you the notice that you could distribute um, by email. And then our website, we do update um, each week the uh, status of projects, so you can see how the project is progressing on the website. As well. So you guys send a letter to the landlord. Yes. And then you'll fly the building, or you'll yes. put a, a you'll, you'll notify the building <coughs> individually. Right? Okay. So another question. Sure. You want to have it? Um, I know, like during the festivals, we have our feast during the summer. Like five, you know, we have five of them during the year. And I know that when special events is doing the tow, if you have a resident sticker, they'll write your plate down. And they sometimes they try to call you to say, hey, because um, sometimes if you, a seventy-two hour notice, like yep. for instance, I haven't driven my truck since Friday. Yep. So it may be there 72 hours ago, and you know you're going to be you put the posting up, and then all of a sudden I'm going to get my car on Tuesday. Take yeah, okay. to well, and unfortunately, that's what happens. Like when people go on a week's vacation as well. So that's why we try to do the two-week notice. Um, we can do uh, a notice in the local newspaper. You know, but you don't do the here. you don't do the phone call. Well, I know, I know a special event does it. I just asked. Pass. Well, I know that. Um, the police officers sometimes will go banging on doors and try to figure out what their secret mechanisms, which I can't disclose in public, um, to try to locate the owner of the vehicles and to get them moved. But that depends on the police officer you get on the details as well. And if they were there on time. So, okay. Anybody else from the council? Uh, I just have a quick go ahead, go ahead. follow up. Um, with regard to the hours of operation, I'd be interested to hear whether Say. Uh, although I think 7 to 4 is good, I think maybe 8 to 5 might be better just from a parking standpoint, vehicles on the road. A lot of people would have to get up and scramble to move their cars at 7 a.m. versus 8 a.m. But again, I'd like to hear from what other people have to say. Um, also, with regard to vehicles being, uh, construction vehicles being on the street uh, during the weekends, do we have any of that? Are you going to pretty much remove everything on the weekends so people can park? Well, the, the, uh Generally, the size of the equipment that D'Alessandro brings into a project is pretty huge. But because of this job, we're going to try to make the machine as small as possible. And he's bringing it in on rubber tires. So at the end of the day, the only thing you'll see left from us is the plate that where we left off digging and maybe a little pile of coal patch because if something happens to a trench overnight, then the emergency guy that needs to come out will have some coal patch. But no heavy equipment. The only other comment I have to make, sorry, is um, if we're doing like the uh, liner process, there would be a bypass pump that would be over 24 7. But other than the pumping operation, it should be there. No equipment. One, they're not working left over there. I do have to caution people though is that when the liner starts, you know, say we start at 8 in the morning and if it's a 12 hour shift, we won't be out until you know 12 hours is done so for the liners we need to come to an agreement you know once we start the liner and if it's going to take 12 hours that eight o'clock is the start time then we'll be here till eight o'clock at night because we can't we can't shut down if it is there parking during the time when you're not working i was confused because you said no parking during right during the work zone no parking time. while we're working in the work zone. Working. So there would be a, like a 75 foot work zone. Say we're. we're but during working. that time you're working, there's no parking. Right. But when you're not working. And then when, yeah, they'll post on the street signs 
if the agreed hours become 8 to 5, the street sign will say no parking from 8 to 5. And then once 5 o'clock comes around, or it's 4.30 and they're done, and you come around and you can see that they're done, you can park there. And I would say the same thing's around here, the 8 o'clock, 5, 5, 7, or something like that. Yes, ma'am. Probably four or five. The only thing when we're at an intersection with like the liners or coming across an intersection, you know, to maintain access on the side streets, you know, we might have to come three cars behind it. So I'm saying on average it'll be five, but you know, it could be six. You know, I've had people call me and say, you said five, but they posted where six cars park, and I know parking is so sensitive. And I'm sure that we're not choking the contractor out where he can't actually get the work done. Yes, sir. I'm just wondering, I mean, uh, with street sweeping, there's, there's an overlap there yep. between your... Well, the good news is my contractor's off. required to do street sweeping in his work zone. So he'll be picking up... Yeah, but also during street sweeping time, there's no, you can't park in those spots, yep. right? So then you add on these work zones, and it becomes even more difficult to... Keep your car there during the day. So I'm just wondering if you looked at those dates at all in terms of is it November 30th till April 1st that there's it's December now. Oh, it's December. Yeah. Well, the other the other option we do have, um, and that's why we're here, and we haven't asked transportation yet for anything other than we need to get in here, is we could do all of the work over the winter. You know, start the liners in January. You know. Those would take a good six weeks, so it would get us to the middle of February. Then we could start the excavation in February and finish it by April. But well, that would be weather permitting? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, they don't work through the blizzards because they, they actually plow the flaws in Braintree, which is much more important than my sewer work. So, um, so all bets are off for that. Well, so, but the good news is that when they do come back, then they have to remove the snow to get back up to the street. So, you know, so. We, we, I mean, so they we remove have, the snow and they can haul it away? They can't dig in the street with it in the way. No, they take it away. <laughs> yeah, they don't move it to the other side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm just going to ask the, the council members if they have any more questions that are going to open up the Anybody else in the council have any questions? Yeah, I, do, I have one quick question. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I, there was a very good presentation, but maybe you answered this, and, and I apologize if I'm re-asking the That's question. Okay. So what you're doing is you're not like this pipes aren't coming out of the ground and we're gonna have those temporary pipes like you know how some places that's for the water main relays. That, so we will have those little temporary only if you're on Stillman Place. That's on this little side street that we need to do the water work. The sewer system we do the a bypass system, but it's for the mainline sewer. You know, if you had uh, like a twelve story apartment building you know, and you had 600 occupants in it, we would have to put you on sewer bypass. But that's highly unusual in the sense that we would have to do something like that. And why exactly, are we, are we, what is the sole, I mean, I'm sure there's more than one reason we're doing this, so. It's failing. So if we, if we have we have a source system that really doesn't work to 100% capacity, basically? Or well, it's, it's working. It sounds like you just kind of clean the pipes up, like well, from the we, liner, Well, we right? clean the pipes. For the section that's in this dashed area, those pipes probably have cracks on the ground, might be starting to roll a little bit. And they the, the thing is, is when the ovality of the pipe reaches more than 90%, and it starts to go like this instead of being round, then it's getting to failure mode. Okay. So the section that's being relayed has gotten past that 90% point and can't be lined. So we have to dig those pipes. So basically it, fix the, it fixes the, the cracks then? Right, so what this does, it seals the water from coming in and it prevents that crack from propagating anymore. And the liner that we actually put in is basically a brand new pipe inside the other pipe. So the other pipe really doesn't function as a pipe anymore. We have a brand new pipe that we're putting into the system. And you guys do this all over the city, right? Yeah. Where, where, where are you doing Where's like the last place you did it? Uh, we do it every day. Because uh, we, we did. The reason I'm asking is, have you done it in, a, in, in a, Have you done it in an area like this? We did uh, Back Bay Beacon Hill. 
where the uh, excavator didn't fit down the street and they had a very mini, mini, mini excavator. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just, yep. I oh. just, I'm just more concerned with the... Um, I will say the north end is one of our most challenging areas. Well, but I'm just more concerned with the whole thing. Well, but Beacon Hill is exactly the same. And we did Beacon Hill all last summer and the summer before. And as Tom knows, we had minimal complaints. Yeah. And how, 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 how severe is the disturbance of, of, of the roads and stuff? I mean, is it something that, I mean... The biggest disturbance is how am I going to get back to where I want to go? So if you can get to your home without using Salem Street, you won't be impacted at all. If, if you have your, your home on Salem Street, if you're out before 8 o'clock and you don't come home until after 5, then you won't know we're there. I'm, I'm, I'm talking more specifically disturbing the guys that live underneath the ground with four legs. Oh, the, the four-legged guys. Two legs. <laughs> the hairy creatures. Um, the vibration will make them want to move. Yeah, which... Uh, <laughs> but that's why we do the baiting before we start. So we try to kill as many of them as we can. And they're, if they're in in the sewer, which they like feeding on our system, mm -hmm. which I don't know why anybody would, but <laughs> they do. Then they'll just die in the sewer, and they float away. And they get to Deer Island, and they screen them, and they get a nice burial at Deer Island. But for those that don't get killed before we start, and if they start moving, that's when you call us and say, I now have a rodent activity problem. I need somebody to come out. We'll come out, and if we find a burrow hole, that's getting into them, we bait the burrow hole, and we try to get them. So we do a pretty extensive baiting program um, to try to minimize any of the impacts. Any other council members? Uh, you mentioned what you're going to do set this project in January. Well, we have not set a specific date. That's why we're here tonight. We'd like to start in October, but if the consensus of the group and if public works and transportation would allow us to work in the winter, We'll wait until January to start the project. So obviously, we don't want to be out here between Thanksgiving and Christmas or New Year's. So that would not be a good time. So we would either get the heavy part of the relay stuff done before, or we could do the liners before, and then do the other phase after Christmas. Or we could just wait until January. Well, we don't really want to wait till March, because then we're back into just before your festive season. If things go slower, then you won't see us just one season, you'd see us for two seasons. I know we're really nice people, but after a while, I will tell you, we'll get tired of us. Any other council members? Okay, I'm gonna open it up to everyone. Um, let me just say this, that they have two things they really wanna have feedback. So in addition to your questions, they wanna know whether or not you prefer seven to four or eight to five. So if you wanna feel free to give your opinion on that. And the second issue is whether or not you prefer them to start in October or if you prefer them to start in January. And before, yep, and before we open that up to the floor, there was one suggestion that I had from someone who frequents the North End. Because when I come to the North End, I take the train. And it wasn't Tom, so there's no one in the room. Was that, I guess, Parmenter Street comes from Hanover to Salem Street right now. Yes. One proposal was to reverse Parmenter, so people that are coming down Salem Street to make deliveries can still make a turn here and get out while we're in this section of the relay. So that would be something that I So you change want. the direction of the road. So you change the direction of the road. Say they get one lane going to Salem and Yenola. Yes. Yenola. Salem to 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 Yenola. Salem from the direction of What about parking? Would it be the same? Well, parking on Parmenter would be the same. The same, the same as the traffic flow? Traffic flow, right. Or, or, you know, if, if people aren't allowed to, you know, so we've done this on a couple other projects. If we reverse it just during the day, it kind of gets complicated. If we reverse it for the duration of the project, then we would come out, turn all the one-way signs, post the no parking signs the other way so people know which way they're supposed to park and then uh, go from there. there so. Street cleaning resumes on, on Parmenter Street uh, as soon as it has posted as uh, scheduled. If they can't 
Well, there would still be streets when you Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have three quick questions. First of all, what's, what is the age of the sewer system on that? The second uh, one is, I'll ask them first. Oh, okay. answer. The second one is, do all the restaurants on the proposed routes have active lease contracts with lost water and sewer? And the third one is, when you do Parmenta to um, Prince on Salem Street, there's a problem with Baldwin Place. It's a private sewer system, and the rat activity is bad now. It's going to be horrific if um, there isn't something done with that sewer line as well. Well, if the sewer on Baldwin is a private sewer, then the commission have any well that's the problem with nothing because there's so many private sewer systems that yeah. nothing's happening and um, there seems to be an abundance of rat activity with its private sewer systems and well the good news is the rodent program extends beyond just Salem Street I believe it's 200 feet outside the project area so they'll get some traps put on their system we'll put some bait and manholes uh, if they have a, a manhole at the end of their private system. Sometimes that doesn't even exist. But is there a plan down the road to make it all public? I don't know of any plan. Um, I mean, that would be something that the private owners would have to approach the commission um, and ask for a betterment. And then they would look at uh, designing a new system and paying the cost of that and constructing that. We just did one in the South End. Uh, two years ago for a street that all the sewers went out in the back alley and it was awful. I mean, I don't even know how they flushed because I rebuilt that project and we abandoned the sewer in the back and definitely wasn't <coughs> functioning. And so we put a brand new sewer in the front and then they paid to have a contractor come in and tie them in. So, as far as the grease program, uh, the commission has an ongoing grease uh, inspection program that's handled through our operations division. Um, anybody that has the requirement for uh, a grease trap, uh, those are inspected, I believe, annually. The other thing that the commission is doing in the near future is a second contract that's coming out. And that contract is just to TV inspect all of the sewers in the North End um, that haven't either been recently replaced or lined um, and they're going to be cleaned and televised. That's part of that capital improvement program so I talked about. So that's public and private? No, our system. Yes, you are. So our sewer system will be inspected. So will the private ways, will they be required to do this? Required? required? No. Then I don't believe they're going to be required to do it. I would think they would want to do it. But well, they won't do it because of the cost will be prohibitive. <laughs> well, the inspection's not that costly. Depending on the size, it can be anywhere from $2 a foot to about $8 a foot. So the system's only 200 feet long. It's really not that expensive for whoever owns the system. Yeah. But it's fair to say that you have no jurisdiction over the private sewer system. Correct. So you can't Just the connection to our Margin Street, there was a major problem with grease. There was a 30-inch wall of grease. Right. It took months to clear up. So that's why we televise our system. You know, we, we spot things like that. Uh, when you see a, a sewer line, you can actually see the scum line from the grease if it's sitting there too long. If the grease actually stays warm and discharges into our system, it car gets carried away and it doesn't congeal and make grease balls. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple of questions. Um, I'll weigh in on the 8 to 5. I think that people need to have time to get yeah. out of their houses, yeah. especially when you're going to restrict their water usage and showering and whatnot. Yeah, that's only for like eight hours one day. Right. For the line. Everybody's still going to be in a pan. Yeah. So um, I'll weigh in on that. I'm concerned about the October start date because I'm not really sure that that gives you enough time to start baiting the sewers, which the rodent problem is already out of control. And unless you start tomorrow, you're not going to have enough time to really complete what you need to complete. So I, I really have concerns about the October start. I, I think that's something you should consider. It's, it's, it's a horrible problem. Yeah, well, the, the baiting that we generally do is a two-week process before we start. So if we started in October, we're three weeks out from that. 
So we have time to do um, a sufficient amount of baiting to help abate the problem. Yeah. And then you were, you were talking about the cracks in the sewer pipe where water is actually leaching into your sewer system. Do you think that by repairing these pipes and replacing them, it will help or hurt our groundwater situation that we already have in this neighborhood? Well, the liner will prevent water from infiltrating into our system. But what about the excavation? You're removing all the water and earth. No, no, no. no. So what we do is we do a, a minor installation of a sump pump in the excavation during the operation. They only draw it down six inches below where we're putting the sewer in. That gets taken out of the hole every night. The water, groundwater regenerates itself very quickly. Um, so we're not drawing it down for a long duration. So wood pilings won't dry out. Um, so, so but that actually I, might help. Well, I'll answer your question. Our line will be then in good shape. So our line won't be drying down the groundwater. What we don't know is what are the condition of the sewer laterals that the buildings own from the face of where the system is better to the building. The good news is that because the streets are so narrow here, we're anticipating that most of those laterals will be probably cast iron um, pretty much out to our system if they were constructed correctly. If they were, then the cast iron pipes don't generally leak that way because they get corroded with tuberculation inside, so that's a different problem. But uh, So we're hopeful that this will help the groundwater table. Uh, there are monitoring wells all over the city that get monitored on a regular basis, so over time uh, we'd be able to uh, see if this has helped that situation. And then one more. Um, on the areas and the time frame that no vehicles are allowed to go down the section that you're working on, how are you going to get the garbage trucks to pick up the trash? Well, we work very well with the police department to make sure that um, the trash man will make it down. If the excavation is in the area where there is trash, these guys will collect it and put it in a loader, or sometimes they just wheel the barrels up, and we help the trash get to the trash guys. There have been probably three instances in my 20 years at the commission uh, where people have called and complained that my trash didn't get picked up. The next day, we'll just come and the guys will pick them up and take them away. Thank you. Um, I haven't been hearing from people on their time preferences. Um, the council will be voting on the subject for a so I'll give you a guideline at least. Thank you. Um, but I'd love to hear from you folks. Yes, sir. Uh, Dominic Pizzignano, 77 Salem Street. Uh, which is the first one between Cross and Parmenter. Uh, it ties in with the trash question and the timing. Uh, th there are two types of trash pickup. One of them is the city. The other one is private for the restaurants. So I think, at least the way my mind thinks, common sense wise would strongly urge to start at 8 and finish at 5. Because uh, uh, they're, they're usually done by 8, usually. So I think that's, that's one point. Um, the, the other point is, what, what's the, does the finished road surface on Salem Street change any? Oh, well, it won't get any worse. Well, it can't get much worse. <laughs> I mean, uh, there, there's already a sinkhole, which is pretty big. Right. So um, we, we walked Salem Street. So in the area, again, from Parmenter almost to Prince Street, we're digging this. So we're required... From Parmenter to Prince. So does that mean, if, yes. if you walk there tonight, and, and I think the uh, cop who's usually there just told me before this that he um, uh, called into the city again because the sinkhole is getting right, where the fairly gas large. The right zone is in the ground. Wait, wait, this? What, 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 right, right in, right, uh, just past the apartment or towards Prince. Yeah, it's, in it's, it's in front of Benevento. Oh, all right. Before. Uh, well, before. Uh, in front the corner. Of, okay, I guess basically. And then there's a second one further down. Mm -hmm. right. So the answer to your question is, the commission does temporary paving. We do three inches of temporary paving on that excavated area, and it'll probably be in this area six or seven feet wide, depending on so what's in our way. Work, it could be yeah. wider. But so it's more patchwork. So, no, let me finish. So the first phase is three <coughs> inches of temporary. And D'Alessandro, I have to say, does a very good job. It'll be very smooth, and it'll be a good job. Then what we do is we have a different contractor. The last three or four years, it's been either LaRusso or Mario Susie that keeps switching in the low bid process here. 
we then do come in and do permanent paving, which then we remove that temporary mix. I would envision on this street, it'll be difficult not to uh, find a good edge, so the city might require us to do full width. Um, but that'll be something that we'll discuss with the city, but uh, independent how many laterals we need to tie in and are with the better excavation. So probably if we work this fall, early spring next year, then by next fall, we'll have come in and done the permanent repair. So it's two phases. Really quick, can I just say something? Excuse me, I apologize. Um, I know the city was going to do Salem Street over again until they realized that the commission was going to come in and do some sewer work. So, um, so they may just say to us, we're not going to have you do any permanent paving. And then they'll just come in and rip the whole street out. So that's things that we coordinate with the Public Works Department before we pave any street, what their intentions are. Sometimes they'll say, Irene, yes, I want you to go in and do your trench. And then they'll come in and do what they need to do in addition to that. Or they might say, well, you were going to get charged with a 10-foot overlay. Um, we want you to do 10-foot wide from one curve. And then they'd come in and do the other and do an inlay. So we'll, we'll, we'll negotiate that with the city once we've actually excavated and found out how much we've impacted it. Okay. Irene, for those people who don't know, could you just explain what the Boston Water Sewer Commission is in relation to the city? Some people think the Boston Water Sewer <coughs> yeah, we do not work is city, city employees. Okay. Right. We're not city employees. Can you clarify that? We're actually a publicly uh, authorized um, utility authority. We're kind of like uh, the MWA. We're not, I don't work out of City Hall. Um, we work cooperatively with City Hall on all of our functions, but we actually are responsible for maintaining the water, sewer, and drainage infrastructure for the city. Not for the city of Boston, but for the whole city. So we work directly for our customers. We're kind of like New England Telephone, but it's a more of a public entity than a private entity. But the mayor, the mayor does appoint water commissioners. And the executive director. The executive director is appointed by the board. So that's our political connection is through the board. I was not appointed by the mayor. I don't know the mayor. I don't know anybody in politics. I don't know anything about the city. I'm not from Boston. So I actually just like construction. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, expand on the, uh, the sinkholes. The big problem all around the market. And I was just wondering, when you're coming into these conditions where most times, most contracts are quiet, I call it the proper type of backfill. When you're starting to work into winter conditions with frost and ice, you don't get the proper compaction. And especially, like you're saying, with so many patches all over the place, this is why we continually have sinkholes, as well as this groundwater, and a Cooper Street is washing away from sinkholes. It's getting into basements and sinkholes all the time. Huge ones, and, uh, right up at the top of it, up to North Major Street. So I didn't know if that was going to affect it any, uh, make the situation better. Uh, do they have a strict criteria for removing, as you mentioned it earlier, uh, some uh, backfill and bringing in uh, new sand so that it can be compacted properly? Yep. Uh, this way, when the street does get done, all that work is done, right. it might stay a while. So the commission does have a strict standard on compaction. Okay. Uh, Alessandro is one of my better compactor contractors. Uh, he actually has a what's called a co-pack it's attached to the bucket of the machine so it's the hydraulics of the equipment that actually is compacting the soil back uh, around our sewer system we put in uh, crushed stone which uh, is self-compacting and then what do you put the gravel backfill if we find out that the material on salem street is clean acceptable good gravel it's actually better to put that gravel back in than try to bring something else in um, if it's bad material, it doesn't meet the gradation that's in the contract, you're required to truck it off site. There's always excess material, and then generally the top, he brings in some good road base material. Because um, the last thing he wants to do is pave the street twice. And uh, we've kindly educated our contractors that if the trench fails, you're back out for fixing it. So you can go back six times and fix it, and then you don't work for us again. So, yes, If you're in one of the limits of the liners, of uh, the staff's areas, uh, then you would be impacted for one day. 
And as far as I live directly right on Salem Street, so I won't be able to go in and out of my home. Anybody that day. anybody that's direct of Hutter, the police officer will let you through if you're on this side. Say we're like right here in the in Baldwin place, and you live here, and the detour is set up here. He would allow you to in if there's a parking space for you to get to. He would let you in if there isn't a parking but space. But we'll Oh, yeah, you can walk in. The sidewalks will be open. Unless there's some excavation where a lateral has failed and we need to get back to a good piece of pipe, then we would set up a pedestrian detour around the work zone. But the sidewalks, we don't anticipate um, digging. Any other questions? Go ahead. In, in terms of your two timing questions, I, I heard a lot, or what I heard about the daily work hours Whoever spoke up said 8 to 5 was better than 7 to 4. I think it's what I heard. I didn't hear anybody say 7 to 4. But I didn't hear a lot of discussion about the two six-week periods, I think. Um, yeah, this fall or next. 3rd of, uh, 3rd of October to 18th of November, and then 3rd of January to 14th of February. So those two six-week periods, are, are they by their nature consecutive? Uh, no, they were just uh, done that way because uh, that's the timing that we think it's going to take for each phase of the project. No, right, but what I mean, though. It could be either way. We can do the liners first, and then the relay. No, but they're consecutive that they can't, there's no, you can't do them concurrent. Well, I think we would be impacting too much traffic and parking if we tried to be in two work zones at the same time on Salem Street. I mean, we could do that, but people would probably get pretty frustrated pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap this up because yep. we've got if one more, and then that's it. Well, like well, so then what, just, okay. so, what, so I'm not sure you got the answer to your question of right. whether people favor the, the start in October yeah. versus the start in January. I don't think you got that in, uh, just feedback. The I, think, I think we're just going to deal with the time right now. Okay. And then you can check back with the commission okay. as you've got more, more handle on, on when and then we can reach out again maybe in our October meeting. Well, except we want to start in October. Like in three weeks. So maybe if well, you can use your email me and let me know, and I can, I can, I can push. Yeah, and then maybe if you can then yeah. get a sense from people out there. Yeah. Okay. But well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Anybody yeah. else? Yeah. 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 One, one question. Yeah. 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 Liners, you said take approximately 12 hours in a day um, on your other jobs. Has it been that at 8 o'clock you will stop the liner so by 8 p.m. it is done rather than in the afternoon, so at 2 a.m., it is still being done? Right. I mean, is there like today we're going to the job site and 8 o'clock we're starting? But if they're not the really liner. ready to roll by 9 o'clock, we won't let them. So, okay. you know, we're, we know that we're not going <laughs> to. The only thing I have to caution if one of the liner fails, which we had our one failure this year, but they were actually able to fix it, most of it, uh, that would be the only thing that would, that would be an unusual circumstance in an emergency if we had to go beyond that time period. Because you're saying 7 to 4 or, or 8 to 5, but now it, I'm hearing 8 to 8 it's or 8 to 10 p.m. Um, on certain days, depending what section of Salem Street, not necessarily the whole right. dotted section, but 75, 110 feet. Right. So the good news is like this little section here, that won't even take 12 hours. Okay. That might take six. So some of the sections will be a lot less time. Okay. But you know, for, like for the longer sections, you know, those will take uh, those will take eight hours at least to get the line out. Okay. Irene, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted just to clarify. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Did you have the hand up? No. Okay. Um, was anybody here in preference for seven to four versus eight to five? Because I kept hearing eight to five. Did anybody? Just curious. Nobody. Okay. I'm going to ask the council if we could just um, make a motion on the time. Would someone like to make a motion? On the time? I'll make the motion. A second. Five. Eight to five. So we're going to recommend to the Boston Water and Sewer Commission um, eight to five. Can I have a second on that? I second. Okay. I second. And uh, can we have a vote, please? All in favor of eight to five rather than seven to four? Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Irene, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.